part. And of course, each one of those areas uh, also has the you know library functions. There could be design tables. There's all sorts of different components that are referenced within those files. So right away, we can see where things can get complicated pretty fast when we're working with very large assemblies, even smaller assemblies with lots of uh, associated and referenced files to those. So we know that when the external reference is created, that document's depending on another for its solution. And if that reference document is actually changed, then it updates the dependent documents on that as well. And that's all providing it can find where those reference documents are. PDM will keep track of all document types. So once you check them into the vault, PDM is aware and the database actually keeps track of where those are and if they're moved or modified. So file references are very important. They uh, make sure that they keep you informed, but they can be easily broken by moving files around. And that's where PDM can come in handy because you can move them, you can move them and rename them and they'll still open and SolidWorks will always be able to grab those files. So let's take a quick peek at how we actually manage those files within PDM. We're going to jump right into a vault. And what we've got set up here is uh, a mechanical folder. And we're going to go with a SolidWorks assembly. It's a simple flashlight. And we can see in here that we've got some components. And I've decided that the battery item on this particular unit itself is something that I would like to keep in a, say, a library folder because I could use it in different projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag that to a subfolder and I'm going to put it in my library. So I'm going to grab that file and I'm going to put that in a battery file. I've got a folder set up here. If I can just scroll down to it, that would be even better. So we'll just drop that right into batteries. And you can see that the file has popped out. But if I go down to that assembly, we can still see that the battery is located. And there's actually two of them being referenced. So PDM knows right away that those files have been moved. We can take a look inside that folder. We can see that the battery has been moved there. And uh, the nice thing is PDM keeps track of that. If we take a look at the history file for that particular uh, unit, uh, we can see very quickly that all of those components are actually in there. So we'll pop into, we'll pop into the correct menu. We can see that every time we move that, we can see who moved it and when, and we can see the different past names where they were taken care of. So we can truly say that PDM does keep track of all this, and it's very easy to find where things are. Uh, the nice thing is, if we were to go back and look at our original assembly, and we pop into here. If I take a look at the contains tab, we can see that the battery is here. It even shows us the path. So it's currently kept in this particular area under power units, under batteries. So very simply, we can take a look and see where all of those components can be, even if we've gone and created our own standard library folder so that we can keep track of all the standard components. Therefore, we don't have to have duplicates for everything. We can reference them to different folders. The nice thing is I can actually make sure that when those batteries are updated, you know, maybe we've got something a little different that's happened. Uh, maybe there's a different case size that we want to use, a uh, different manufacturer. Maybe they've put tabs on the batteries now. Right away, we can update the appropriate projects because we know where those batteries are used. Now, along with that, we know that the, um, the SolarWorks PDM product actually not only keeps track of it, it also do, does the uh, history of all of that, and we can make sure that everyone is quite aware of where all of those files are. So it updates those references automatically, and it allows you to view those parent-child relationships. So let's take a quick poll number two. And uh, what we're going to be asking on there is um, basically, in your opinion, do you feel that SolarWorks PDM would help you automatically manage the uh, references better than your current method? I'll give you a couple moments to fill in that poll. We appreciate your uh, actually answering those questions for us. All right, thank you so much. 
Now we're going to take a look at manual file references. Now the nice thing about manual file references uh, is that we can take uh, we can take a look again in our vault. We'll go actually drive right in here, and when we go to add a reference, we could take a look at this uh, light assembly. Let's take a look at the bulb itself. What we do is we're just going to right click on it and we're going to uh, check that file out. And we're going to pop in here. Thank you, Microsoft. Jump right back into my vault again. There we go. Sorry about that. So we jump into our flashlight project. I'll just expand that, it makes it easier on your eyes. And if we take a look at that bulb, what we're going to do is we're going to check out the bulb. And we're going to go down and we're going to look into, for that particular project, we have some documentation set up. So we have an incandescent bulb PDF. So that's basically a spec sheet that we pulled off the internet. Uh, indicates all of the specifications for that light bulb. And all we really need to do there is just copy it. And if we jump back into our files, we can take a look at this one here and we can do a paste as reference and we can see we've got the light bulb there's our spec document and we can check that back in and now when I take a look at contains we can see that the uh, the bulb itself so the CAD model actually contains a PDF of the specifications for that document. So that's a great way for people to actually take not only spec sheets, it could be an Excel spreadsheet with calculations based on uh, something to do with your particular project or part. Uh, maybe it's a uh, safety light curtain uh, calculation that you need to keep with a specific layout. Uh, potentially it's some hydraulic cylinder calculations. Uh, but you can keep those documents referenced to the revision of a particular model and making sure then that you can uh, refer back to those items at that particular specification uh, or document. You can even drop an email in there from an engineering change request uh, or even if you have an ECN process, you can take those ECN documents and you can link them for the parts. The nice thing is, is if I take a look at uh, those individual files, so if I were to go ahead and take a peek back at that document, and I could say, where is it used? It shows me that that document is linked to that light bulb. If I were to take a look at the light bulb itself, and we go into the miniature bulb and say, what's it contain? We can see that the bulb itself contains a link to the document. So if I find one, I can find the other. The nice thing about that is we very easily are able to go ahead and see all the reference documents as they uh, uh, pertain to each other. Now, when we go back to something for an assembly, let's take a quick peek at what we can do with that. And the nice thing is here, uh, we can take a look and see that the um, ability of PDM to actually allow you to modify those reference files is actually very, very uh, helpful in your day-to-day -day operations. So let's take a quick peek at how we do that with, say, this assembly. Uh, we very easily can go ahead and go up to the Tools menu and just take a look at how to update those references. We can see that we've got the path indicated where all those items are. We can see that the uh, battery itself has been moved to a different location. We can even see that this particular file has not been checked out. But we have some additional commands in here uh, where if I select the file and I go in to replace file, we come up with a menu that allows us to go ahead and dictate where we actually want to move different components to. Uh, we have some other areas where we can find files. So literally we can say, 
show me the files that are in a particular folder so we can look in projects and we can actually start to hunt. We can actually even tell it how to limit our locations of where it's going to search for. So we have quite a bit of automation that's behind this in order to make us uh, very uh, more productive in setting up these uh, change files. This comes in really handy when somebody says, here's a set of files I'd like you to add to the vault, uh, or you've got maybe a legacy project stored on a shared drive, uh, maybe it's been uh, something a customer has sent you, or somebody just walks up to your desk with a uh, USB flash drive. Very easy to go ahead and take those files and add them to the vault and even replace the references if you wish. There's other tools in here, you know, such as add files to the vault. Uh, again, those things come in really handy in assisting you in managing all of those reference files. So with the linking of paste and reference files, you can see very quickly that um, your functionality and your uh, ability to work with files is much, much simpler and easier. So let's take a quick poll. Poll number three, would the ability to link any document to your SOLIDWORKS files be a benefit to help you keep things organized? And again, that could be something such as a specification for a project. Uh, it could be um, a set of deliverables for a particular product. Uh, it even could be a uh, quality document that you want to make sure is linked for the end of the project so that when you look for those files, quality right away knows here's the shim log for it uh, or potentially here's the check sheet that we need to do before we ship out a product. All right, thank you so much for poll number three. Let's take a quick look at next steps. So. One of the things that we've uh, got the ability to do with Javelin uh, is we can go ahead and do some demos and discuss PDM with you. We can make sure that we can help you manage next, next steps. Uh, we can look at your processes and we can make sure that the way that you work, we can uh, enhance with uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM. Uh, we do have another um, PDM webcast coming up, keeping all your files, not just CAD files, managed and connected with SOLIDWORKS PDM. That will be on Wednesday, September 13th at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So uh, please uh, join me with that one. And uh, what we're going to do right away is do a quick review. We've taken a look at your file references. Uh, we've shown how we can um, you know, indicate what SOLIDWORKS does and its methodology and locating all of those references, but also how they can easily be broken by somebody getting in the way of how those things were originally stored. And of course, then we looked at how to manage those reference files with PDM itself, how it automatically updates those files. Uh, we can see the parent-child relationships, and we can even create user-defined references. Of course, we can link those files with paste as reference, and of course, as I said, Javelin would be more than um, happy to help you take a look at how to keep all those files uh, managed with SOLIDWORKS PDM. So we'll have poll number four. And was this webcast helpful to help you see the benefits of managing uh, your file uh, references when using SOLIDWORKS PDM? Nice thing about PDM is it gives you some added tools that you don't normally have at your disposal. Makes things much, much faster and friendlier to uh, keep all of those files uh, managed and at your fingertips. Let's get a few more people to finish that poll off. And in a moment, we'll open up for questions. So poll number five, would you like Javelin to contact you uh, with regards to uh, discussing the benefits of PDM? You can quickly pop in responses to that. And just wrapping that up, thank you very much. And now we'll open the floor to questions. So if you take a look down in your um, box, you should see a section that you can uh, communicate questions to us. Just enter them in. Man, we'll 
we'll give you a couple more moments. So I have a question in here. Uh, when SolidWorks inspection generates an Excel spreadsheet, is there a way to automatically link uh, or paste as? See if I can read the rest of it uh, as a reference to the original drawing. Uh, there's a possibility through a workflow to help automate that. Uh, it's a little bit involved, uh, but the ideal situation is you do that manually. It's much much faster, and uh, it's also easier to ensure that that document is linked to the correct. Um, subcomponent or references for that file. Good question. We can discuss that in detail with you if you wish to contact us directly. And I think that may be the end of it. And I'd like to thank you very much. Feel free to uh, contact us if you wish, if you have any other questions, uh, or if you think about some of the context of this uh, webinar, uh, we can always answer those questions directly with you. Thank you very much for joining me, and uh, Javelin really appreciates your attention. Have a great afternoon.